Hi, my name is Kara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I'm not doing anything super special today. I'm going to go to TJ Maxx and go to get cat litter because I love my cats so much and they deserve everything in the world more than just their basic necessities. Luna's, Luna's currently throwing a little bit of a tantrum because she's been bad today. She broke some blinds. She has a knack for doing that. We're going to ignore her. I'm going to do a look that I'm going to be pretty much recreating a look very similar to my online friend, Light Pocket Change. Um, I'll link her channel and her Instagram in the description bar because I love her. I think she's amazing. She's so sweet, she's so kind, and she's so creative and talented. So to start, am I gonna do my brows? Let's do my brows first. Okay, one, one, two, three. Hello brows are on now. I do the exact same thing for my brows every single day. I just use the Ardell Dark Brown um, Eyebrow Pomade. I'm actually doing really great with this. I've like hit to the bottom now. Really proud of myself. I'm probably going to change eyebrow pomades or how I do my brows just a little bit differently when that runs out because I don't actually really like it all that much. <laughs> I just don't want to throw it away because it's still good. So, And I went over it with the NYX brow mascara in espresso and my brows are done pretty much um yeah so to start we're going to do another usual of mine and i'm going to conceal my eyelids which is with a lighter concealer i'm hoping this doesn't come up like a watery liquid first thank you very much um to just kind of provide a base for my eyeshadow i'm not an annoying person who does beauty videos who i'm going to switch through multiple palettes Please don't ever feel like you have to have the exact same thing that I have. And that goes for clothes and hair, beauty, all of that stuff. You don't need the exact same thing that I have. Just get something kind of similar or, have, or whatever you want to do personally. But I'm going to be probably swapping through my Anastasia Subculture palette, the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill Dark Magic palette, and my own collection of single eyeshadows. Don't ever feel pressured that you need the exact same thing that I do because I'm not even using the exact same thing that Lay Pocket Change was using. So, for me personally, I always start out with the darkest shade that I'm going to use. And because her look is what I'm recreating, I don't know if I'll be able to pop this onto the screen. Probably not because I'm not that super talented with editing. But either way, I'll show on my Instagram story the day that I post this. But it's more like a green, dark, emerald kind of moment. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shade Untamed from my Subculture palette on a Morphe M431 brush. It's getting very hard to just ignore her in the background here. She's very adamant about me looking at her. But sometimes that's all she wants. Um, I'm going to actually talk through more of my technique because when I was hanging out with my friends yesterday, um, it became very clear to me that... Um, I think that's one thing that we're kind of missing with like makeup videos is that a lot of people don't really go through what they're talking about uh, very well um or a lot of people don't do tutorials anymore but this type of look that i'm doing is you could change the colors and then just um make this more wearable or more daytime appropriate or change it to fit your outfit if you want to whatever you want to do what i'm doing is for my eye shape because my eyes are rounded kind of almond shape i'm taking this pencil brush I prefer to take the darkest shades on smaller brushes so I can get and place the color exactly where I want it to because I'm not going to be trying to blend this out as intensely. I want to keep the deepness of that shade there. So what I'm going to be doing is taking this right on my outer V. See how this is like the perfect shade to just kind of do that exact V shape? You want a brush kind of similar to that. I know e.l.f. has one too. Um, I think it's like $3 so you don't need this one. I think this one's like 4 so it's not that much more expensive but it's really up to you. I prefer this one because it is softer and has a little bit more flexibility to it than the e.l.f. But the e.l.f. one would also work as well too. Um, and then I'm going to just bring this through my crease. Now as you can tell I have a slight hood on my eyes. This is where my eyelid, like when I open my eyes, that color is completely gone. So I like to do it in that space and then open my eyes, look in the mirror, see where I need to bring it up to and then bring it up to that space. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to bring it all the way along the line of where my actual crease is at. Back and forth windshield wiper kind of movements. 
adding extra pigment as I want. Now, see how I kind of went, started bringing it up and above that line? I raised my eyebrow a little bit to kind of bring more open canvas and space there. I want to softly, see uh, with the elf brush you can't really blend as well, but this brush you kind of can. It's a little bit, it's like pretty pointed and dense, but it's not so overly dense that you can't blend with it. So I'm going to take it along the edges of that color to kind of blend it up and provide like a soft line. And that's going to allow us to be able to blend very easily and meld the next color that we're going to be adding on top of this. And don't ever feel bad if you feel like your makeup doesn't look the way that the image or whoever you're trying to kind of copy looks like. It's fine. We've all been there. Our makeup has not always looked all that great. My beginning bit of wearing makeup probably looked ridiculous. <laughs> so you see how I brought it up and around. I'm, hold on, I'm going to make sure that it's actually focused. It's now like a blended kind of shape. Take a slighted pointed blending brush. This is a Morphe M506. I think the M507 is pretty much the exact same thing as this. Either one works. They're both like $5, I believe. Elf also has a slightly similar thing to this, but I don't remember the name of it. So to then kind of continue to blending out that like tealish kind of shade. Um, should I take Destiny? Yeah, we'll take Destiny. We're gonna, I might actually use more of this and then only use like one shade out of my custom palette. I'm gonna take the shade Destiny, which is like this light khaki olivey green type of shade. I'm gonna take that. Um, for this palette in particular, I think less is more. I try to go in with a very small amount, tapping off the excess. You saw that smoke? There it is. Um, when I'm blending out stuff because I don't want it to be so heavily pigmented that I can't blend anymore at that point. So I'm going to then take this very small amount and go right where I started to blend out that edge and then take it, windshield wipe the motions, right along the edge of that color. We're further blending this out to make it a lot softer and not as intense. Um, take your time with that and go with very small amounts because you can always add more. You cannot take it away unless you just start all the way back over. And in that case, there's also no shame. Kind of keep going over. I think Destiny is like the perfect shade for this because that kind of it it's a it's khaki and it's a little brown but not really I don't know it's just really pretty. So now that we've kind of blended out that shade a little bit, we've lost a little bit of the pigmentation from the shade Untamed. So I'm going to go back in with Untamed and add that color kind of back in, trying to just keep it focused way more and not really worrying about blending it out because it's already there's already a base of it having been blended out I'm going to go over that with the shade from the morphe x jacqueline hill palette but i'm going to take it on a very huge blending brush or not huge but just like it's definitely going to blend it, uh, just kind of soften everything out and bring it back to similar to my skin tone. I'm taking, oh, the name is probably fully, oh, it's almost gone. This is the Wet n Wild Crease Brush. Um, it's very nice for blending because it's not, it's not, this is not going to deposit color. If you want something to deposit color, make sure your brush is more dense. This is just going to simply blend everything out. This palette's also not heavily pigmented, so you can go overboard, but what I like to do is just take my brush and twirl around, tap off a little bit, and then go in. I know a lot of people complained about the Morphe palettes not really having a lot of pigmentation, but I'm the type of person where I actually prefer stuff to not be heavily pigmented right off the bat because it allows me to be able to control how much pigmentation is actually going to be there. I'm going over this. This is going to not really do much when you're looking at it. Kind of see how, like, you still see the green. Kind of still see a little bit of destiny. But I'm just blending out the edges here. And because I blended a little bit of destiny with, I'm going to add that kind of back in. Not too heavy, though. Not too heavy. Just a little bit to kind of bring the color back in to kind of help. Make sure that untamed looks blended out.
This is weird saying the shade names. I normally don't when I do my makeup. I do my lower lash line before I do like the rest of my face and then I just go back over it if I want to. At this point you could like do your face and then do your um under eye but I am going to show you how I do my face a little bit too. Probably not going to go too heavily in detail because I don't really do a lot for my face. Um, so now what I'm going to do is where's my black eyeliner? This is like a roll up eyeliner from like LA Colors I believe. It's just black. I'm going to take this and line my lower lash line. But I'm going to do this in a way um, that's slightly different. I'm going to line the whole thing but not in the way that you may think. So I'm going to kind of get close here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line it and then bring it down a little bit into my actual lashes on the outer corner because what I'm going to do is I'm I don't think I'm going to add um, eyeliner, but how the shape of the eyeshadow works is it being darker in the outer corner. I want it to look more kind of like elongated, like like a cat eye type of thing. So because I'm doing that, I want the outer corner to be darker than the inner. So I'm going to bring it down lower on the outer bit, pretty much the outer third of my lower lash line. And then I'm going to just only line very closely for the rest of my eye. What I'm saying, like looking at it, it kind of looks darker, more brought down than that. Um, it's gonna work all out in the end. When I add lashes, it looks good. It's not true. This could, this look could totally be done without lashes. Um, I'm going to add lashes because I'm extra. And then I'm also going to tighten line. I'm pretty much going to do on the lower lash line is pretty much copy just exactly what I did on the top. So I'm gonna start out with the shade Untamed on this pencil brush and I'm going to be a lot more heavy handed on this outer corner and then try to connect it to the um, upper outer V little corner here. So you're doing little circular motions to kind of blend the two together. Um, and I'm going to bring it down, but I'm going to be a lot more like heavy on the outer and then a lot lighter on the inner. I'm going to take Destiny to kind of blend out that shade as well. Now we're at the point where the eye is almost done. We just need to do the lid shade. I'm planning on doing kind of like a little bit of glitter on the inner corner, like for my inner corner highlight. And the shade that I'm using is going to be like a bright electric green. So because of that, um, I'm going to keep the actual lid shade a lot more simple. So I'm thinking I'm going to take a slightly satiny type of shade from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the shade Chiffon. It is a nice, um, simple, taupey, bronze kind of shade. You see, it's like, it looks reflective, but like on the eye, it's really kind of just like a satin. It doesn't really look like a heavy shimmer or anything. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to do this on a brush, yes I am. I'm going to use this on the BH Cosmetics. This is from the Smoky um, Essential no, actually no, I think this is just their basic brushes. This is a very simple type of brush. This is a flat eyeshadow brush. It's very thick, it, so it is great for using um, for shimmer shades to pack onto the lid. And I'm going to basically place this right onto my lid. I'm not cutting my crease, so I don't care if this gets a bit into my crease when I open and close my eyes. Um, doesn't matter too much to me but if you cut your crease um, I'll probably show that in another video on how to do that in a way where you won't ever have to worry about your eyeshadow transferring especially if you have like more hooded lids or a lid that has a, um, a little bit of a hood on it oh I can show you how to do that too I'm just not doing that today because I don't particularly mind it blending a little bit now for the inner corner the shade I'm taking is going to be another eyeshadow single. <laughs> this is going to be Python Green from Coastal Scents. Coastal Scents is pretty decent eyeshadows if you want to experiment with colors. I know it doesn't look super intense right off the bat. You kind of have to build it up a little bit, but that's fine by me because what I'm going to be doing is building it up. <laughs> I'm going to be taking it on a small eyeliner brush. This is from Real Techniques. I think this was part of their like basic eyesh um, eyeshadow brush collection thing. I'm going to take it on such a small brush because I want this very concentrated on just my inner corner. 
I'm going to see you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yes, there's fallout. You can probably see that that fell onto my nose a little bit. I don't mind that because I never do my face first before my eyes. It's a lot easier to wipe that away if you do your eyes first. People who do their um, face first and then their eyes and then have the nerve to do like smoky or like very intricate eye looks, I applaud you. You're bold. You're brave. Way more courageous than me. So I'm kind of taking this right um, up onto the inner lid a little bit and then kind of pulling it out. I'm now going to take my index finger into the color like this and I'm going to pop it right in the same place but because my finger, how I did it, my finger tips around of course, I'm going to pretty much do like small circular motions to kind of blend it out. And then there we go. There's the inner corner. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I'm now going to be taking a little bit of glitter because I said I'm extra. I'm going to be using the Stila Magnificent, um, what is it called? The full name of it. It's the glitters, but it's the Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. I'm taking uh, the shade Smoky Storm. This is more like a gold shade. I'm not taking a lot of this. I'm taking the doe foot applicator and doing a very small dot that is going to blend into all of my inner corner <laughs> and i'm going to take my middle finger and then blend that out lit <laughs> so now i'm going to go do the other eye and i will be right back other eye is fully complete or at least eyeshadow wise now at this point if you don't want to wear false lashes you could easily just go in with a mascara whatever mascara you want and then go from there I'm going to add an extra step where I'm going to do a little bit of liner to cover up my lash band as y'all know I talked about this in my empty uh, in my current empties and I'm going to be taking the NYX matte liquid liner surely like I'm almost finished with this one I already have a backup I'm going to be taking this I'm not doing a wing I'm literally going as close to where my lashes sprout from my eyelid and I'm just lining my lash line on the top now that I've lined my lashes, I'm going to go in with my mascara. I'm almost out of this too. Um, this is the Monster Big Long Comb. I'm still on the hunt for a new mascara. I can't figure out like which one I should try next. I think I might try the Essence one. I'm messily going over my lashes because I'm putting uh, false falsies on, so I kind of don't really care if they look like super defined today. If I was going without lashes or false lashes, I would be taking a bit more care. False lashes today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking for a pair of lashes that wing out on the outer corner because that's how my eyeshadow look goes. I want it to basically go with the flow of my eyeshadow. I'm going to show you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So these are the Ardell Demi Wispies. You see how in the inner corner they're smaller and then they fan out to a larger lash? That's going to help give that cat eye effect. Um, it also helps when you're wearing an actual eyeliner wing to kind of go and bring the whole look a little bit more together. Um, so these would be a really good option. If you wanted to go thicker, these are also pretty much the exact same thing, but much thicker. These are the Ardell 250 and Mega um, from their Mega Volume line. I always write on the back what line it is so I know. Um, these, as you can tell again, have the smaller lashes in the inner corner, fan out. They're also much thicker like they're way more like dramatic and fluffed out these these are the Ardell Wispies 602 these don't really start out much smaller than the outer corner these would be better for if you're doing like a halo eye look or if you're doing a, a single eyeshadow look if you're not trying to make your eye look more like cat eyed if you're not trying to do that or if your eyeshadow is not kind of giving that sort of illusion to the person in front of you or whatever um, these would be a better kind of lash to work with for that reason. For today's look, I'm going to be taking the Ardell Demi Wispies because these are going to fit the look that I'm trying to go for today. So the eyelash glue that I like to use is the Duo Brush On Eyelash Glue. I talked about this a little bit, I believe, in my current empties, or maybe I edited it out. I don't know. Editing me will know. But uh, <laughs> uh, I use this glue because I find that I actually get to use all of the glue in here. 
So I'm going to take one lash out very carefully. Um, the lash bands on these I like a lot too because even looking at them they're very thin and small. You want a very thin um, eyelash band. You don't want anything too thick because a thicker eyelash band is a lot harder to conceal with eyeliner. You're going to use way more eyeliner and probably cover up all of your eyeshadow work trying to cover that lash band. And it's very uncomfortable when you blink. Like when you blink and open and close your eyes, you'll be able to feel that band if it's really thick. So I like the Ardell ones because they're inexpensive. You can use them a bunch of times and the lash bands aren't very thick on them at all. They're brushing it onto the lash band. You kind of want your lash uh, glue to be a bit tacky. You can blow on them or just wait, hang around, do a little jig, whatever you want to do till it gets tacky. Um, since I'm using a brush on glue, there, I'm not depositing like a bunch of glue on there so I don't have to wait as long to, for it to get tacky. If you have a squeezy tube lash, I suggest doing both lash bands and then once you finish with the second one, you should probably be good to add this on. Because if you do it when it's too wet and it's not tacky enough, it can move around on your eye and it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually apply correctly. So I'm going to take, I have a mirror here in front of me. I'm going to try to get close, but still show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take this lash and place it on the center of my eyelid, as close to my actual lash, um, where my lashes grow as possible. I'm going to then take a pair of tweezers and I'm going to then gently take the outer band and place it on the outer again, and then squeeze my natural lashes and the false lashes together in the process. And I'm going to do the same to the inner corner, taking it, stretching it, and then putting it right onto the inner corner, making sure that I'm squeezing my natural lashes and the false lashes together. Squeezing them together does work to kind of blend them together so they don't look as stark and as separate and as obvious as, <laughs> you know, as a pair of false lashes can potentially look. And then, there we go. There's a lash on that eye. Um, it takes practice. I'm not gonna lie and say that this is gonna turn out and it's the most foolproof way to apply lashes. No. Everyone has their own way of applying their lashes. This is how I do mine. Um, there may be a way in here that just isn't going to work for you. I think you've, if you have more hooded eyes, there may have to be a different technique for you um, on applying lashes. I used to only use my hands to do my lashes. I found that I wasn't getting my lashes as close as possible. See, that's another thing. You're just going to learn as you do it over and over. You'll find techniques and ways that will work for you. Um, everybody's eyes are different. Everybody's eye shape is different and all that jazz. So, now that we've got our lashes, liner, everything on the eyes is pretty much done, we're now going to move on to the face. Um, I'm going to talk about primer for a second here. Um, I'm going to be using the NYX Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer. This is really good if you have like, my skin is more normal. I would say that sometimes it's dry, I do have dry patches, but um, I mostly would say that my skin is normal. It's not overly dry, it's not overly oily, it's just like kind of right in the middle. So this primer is good for me. It also doesn't, I feel like it kind of helps my makeup stay a little bit longer on my face. Another primer that I do like, but this doesn't do absolutely anything for keeping your makeup on longer. It just makes things look glowy. So if you're using like a matte or like semi-matte um, foundation, this primer, this is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I would suggest if you do want this, because this is not cheap, this is like 35, 38 something dollars. If you're going to be using, um, if you want to try this, get the $12 sample from Ulta. Do not buy this full size the first time if you don't, if you've never tried it before. But I like this primer a lot for using with foundations that are um, a little, not dry, but just matte you know because if it's dry if, if it's a drier foundation i prefer to use this because it hydrates my skin this is the size of the priming filter for example so you could see like you could this is a decent amount of primer too to try out to make sure that you like it uh beforehand what's another primer that i've tried out before i know there's priming sprays i've never really tried those before i don't know how well those work but just in general with primaries you want to get a primer that's going to work with your skin type so if you have dry skin you want something that's gonna say the words luminous hydrating um just stuff of those uh that nature if you 
have very oily skin, you want something that's going to say poreless, smoothing, um, oil control or something like that. You want to get something like that. If you have normal skin, you could probably get away with either one just depending upon the type of finish that you want. For me, I mostly like a luminous finish. I want my face to look like actual skin. So I prefer stuff that's going to be hydrating, luminous, or something that's just not super heavy in terms of primer. So because this is a jelly primer, it looks like there's nothing in there. It shakes. I promise there's stuff in there. I'm going to take pretty much a fingertip amount and then whoop, <laughs> put a little bit onto my face all over. Um, This is a primer, but it almost kind of feels a little bit like a moisturizer. Um, I have worn this before on my face without actual foundation before so I'm just going to I'm smoothing it down my neck because I may blend my foundation down my neck but just a perm. I don't always do that because I tend to break out sometimes when I do that and it doesn't matter what foundation so it's not like the foundation's breaking me out I think it's just that like my neck is just rejecting me to be great like that I'm gonna be careful around these brows because I already did them <laughs> all right so now we have our primer on you kind of want to let this sit a little bit for a couple minutes so while i'm letting mine sit i'm going to go wet a beauty sponge i talk about sponges for like a second here i'm going to be using the real techniques i think this is the miracle sponge you can get these at walmart get them at ulta get them at like cvs walgreens all the drugstore places this brush this brush this sponge is like five dollars I've never tried the Beauty Blender, but trying these and then trying other cheaper sponges, I think these are probably some of the best sponges, I think, for your money. Because you're going to go through them. They're going to look ratty. They're going to look awful. I have one that I should probably get rid of now. Um, I don't know how long they last for some people. If you're using a sponge on a daily basis, go with this one. Because the Beauty Blender is $20 and it's going to be way more expensive. And it's a sponge. And especially if you're using it on the daily, you don't want to gonna go through it really fast so I suggest these sometimes they have my TJ Maxx in like a pack of four for like 12 bucks too so just saying I'm back so tips for wetting your sponge you want it damp this is pretty much doubled in size I'm going to show you what it looks like without being wet see what I'm saying this is a lot squishier when you squeeze your sponge you don't want water to come out if water's coming out still like when you squeeze it all the way down like that it's too wet um squeeze it out some more and then try again um, my sponge is pretty much damp at this point. It's like got water in there, but not too much. Because if you have too much water in there, it's not going to actually blend out your foundation and it's really going to heavily take away coverage of your foundation too. So for me, what foundation am I going to use today? I'm going to be using, I've heard mixed emotions about the Anastasia Stick Foundation. I like it for me. I could totally see how it's not great for people with actual dry skin. Um, I'm going to be taking this shade, which is pretty much my perfect match. This is the shade Cool Golden. Um, normally, stick foundations don't really work for dry skin types. I've heard that the Hourglass one works pretty well, though, um, if you have drier skin. But it all just depends on the formula. I've heard these aren't really great for dry skin. I heard that from Julia Mazzucato here on YouTube as well. But for me, I have normal skin, so this works for me. Um, you can pretty much use whatever foundation. Do try to get a good match. Uh, a way to kind of get a better match is you want to match your face to your neck now your hands as you can see my hands aren't quite the same shade as my face so and I'm going to be taking this just a couple wipes this is a foundation that isn't like super hydrating on its own which is why I like to pair it with the hydrating jelly primer and I'm just going to blend this out the wetter your sponges or the more damp or whatever, it is going to take a bit of coverage away. I personally prefer a lighter coverage of foundation because I prefer my skin to look like my skin, but just more like evened out. So that's what I'm doing. Just gonna... And if you have a super hard sponge or your sponge isn't wet enough, you're gonna have to like beat your face. <laughs> my sponge is pretty bouncy and like damp but I've also had the sponge for a bit so it's a bit more like worn in in, in a way so I'm just gonna blend this out you see how this isn't really giving me like a luminous finish it just looks like skin I have this huge pimple here that I'm really wishing would like either pay rent or get out <laughs> 
This is the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation in the shade Honey Beige. I don't like to use concealer under my eyes um, very often. I think I did it yesterday when I was doing like costumes and stuff. But it's a... Uh, do you hear her just lick? Luna? Oh, she's weird. I'm taking my finger. I'm not taking this cushion thing. I know it may not be as... This shade is, all the shades in this line are actually way too light for my actual skin tone. But they're great for under eye. Because they're like hydrating and like very thin. Like in the sense where it's not going to give you like a ton of coverage. Which I like. I prefer very sheer. Don't want anything super intense. Take the angled part of this sponge and I'm going to take that underneath my eye. And this is what I was talking about where I say sometimes I, um cover up my under eye to be kind of light and I don't like to use concealers under my eyes because I find a lot of them are way too heavy as well for my liking so I just prefer like a lighter shade of foundation that I can't wear can't return <laughs> and do the same to the other side then go back over the part where I used on my face to kind of blend that edge of the lighter shade out to match the rest of my face and then I take a bit here and then take it on my chinny chin chin a little bit on my cupid's bow because I highlight there because I love it oh I love highlighting my cupid's bow well. I think it just looks so nice I like to use a lot of cream products so I'm going to I'm trying out the stick foundation this is stick contour and the shade earth from Anastasia Beverly Hills this last night so I'm hoping I'm gonna show you the shade here I'm hoping it doesn't look absurdly dark you know that looks like it'd be a decent enough shade for like a contour I normally just bronze but I've been finding lately that I feel like my bronzer doesn't really show up as well I'm going to just for contour I'm just going to find my cheekbone my cheekbone is here I'm going to contour slightly back here and kind of blend it up to here because I have very high cheekbones it's super far into my face because I just kind of want it right here and I'm gonna take it up a little bit it's gonna be kind of like a semi C shape and I'm going to take my sponge and kind of blend that out because I want it to be soft don't want it to be intense kind of want it to blend into like the rest of my face I don't want it to obviously look like I tried to contour <laughs> fantastic I'm also going to go over my chin a little bit or underneath my bottom lip in the middle and I'm doing that to make my lips look bigger. I just have a hard time defining my bottom lip when I put my uh, put lipstick on. So we're gonna do that today because I can. Application seems to be much easier with this than a powder. Glad I got this. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit onto my forehead, but just the temple-ish region. Cream highlight. This is the Shimmering Skin Perfector Port Cream and Prosecco Pop from Becca Cosmetics. It looks dirty. Everything looks dirty and covering cat hair. <laughs> I'm going to take this one of the high points of my face. This is a very, um, and I'm just blending it out with my finger, but this is a very, how you say, uh, natural, very, not sheer just not overly intense blinding highlight like if you want a blinding highlight this is not for you you're not gonna glow to the gods or anything like that with this highlight or at least in my experience i don't i find that i just kind of look naturally kind of dewy i don't like to highlight all the way down my nose i feel like that looks a little weird so what i do is like right between the eyes on my nose a little bit onto the tip so it looks like my nose is fully like kind of highlighted but not it's actually not it's a kind of cheat code way of like using less highlight actually for getting like a similar effect 
cupid's bow i'm not going over this with a powder highlight or anything like that so whatever this looks like is what it's going to look like i'm now now that we're done with the creams and everything i'm going to set parts of my face with powder i'm going to start with the maybelline fit me powder in the shade 330 toffee i'm taking a foundation brush i'm using this purely underneath my eyes to kind of set that um, lighter shade of foundation shade cappuccino in the anastasia beverly hills um, powder bronzer i'm going to be taking it over with a 400 real techniques brush it's just a big fluffy kind of tapered dome brush i love this for bronzer because it blends and applies and i'm just gonna large circular motions over my whole cheek kind of region where i put that contour at i'm just gonna kind of like it's like warming it up like not making it overly warm but just adding a little bit of definition blush i'm gonna be taking a blush that i use whenever i don't uh it's just a very neutral shade of blush did this break oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the wet n wild color icon blush in the shade mellow wine i'm taking it on a blush brush this makes this a blush brush or gray for blush because it's not super dense it's just gonna blend out really well these blushes are very pigmented from one wild oh my gosh and i'm gonna smile so on the apples of my cheek i'm going to kind of concentrate that color and then just kind of blend that out i don't naturally blush so i don't like using a huge amount of blush because it just looks so i don't know how to put it just like like, you know, that's not me. That's not me. My face gets hot. I don't blush, though. And then... Just kind of swirling. Huge circular motions along that, too. I just want to very blend it out. Um, it just kind of adds a bit of, like, rosiness to my face. Instead of keeping it from looking just, like, bronzed. Brown type of thing kind of breaks up that monotony but this is a nice blush color because on my skin tone it's very neutral it's not warm it's not cool it's just nicely in the middle so that's pretty much my face done i'm now going to go in with a lipstick at this point if you were doing um a very neutral everyday type of look you could just go in with a nude if you want to do something dark and vampy you can go in with a dark red or a black today i'm going in with a dark green this is what's the name of this it this is the shade 29 from the sephora lip cream um line these are 14 dollars, i believe at sephora they're really nice i like the doe foot applicator on these i believe i finished i finished the black one it was in my empties i talked about this formula more in detail oh <laughs> the whole look i'm going to take a setting mist i'm taking the pixie glow mist um I gotta take this up because there's oil here. I also like to use the Laura Geller Spackle Mist. This helps my makeup stay on much longer, but I woke up super late, so the day's not, I'm, it's not too much more of the day today. So I don't really care about it saying, I just wanna look glowy, luminous, and like I got everything figured out and I drink plenty of water, you know? Anyway. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and to watch. I hope you learned some cool new tricks on how to do your eyeshadow or apply your lashes or about like primers or whatever I gave some cool tips and stuff about. Um, I'm probably going to go into more detail about like beginner friendly stuff um, a little bit more because I feel like most people don't do that anymore and I feel like with the kinds of products out now that the market is so saturated that can we kind of need an updated list or updated techniques on how to do stuff you know especially if you want to get into makeup it's a little intimidating you kind of don't know what to do because there's so many things to try and so many different brands and all of that so i think that would be really cool so i'm gonna try to do more um videos along that line of talking about makeup and beauty and stuff um yeah and just going into more detail about things uh thank you for watching this video i really hope you enjoy it i hope you're able to follow along with whatever you actually have in your collection or maybe getting something similar maybe i showed you something that you already had your eye on you were kind of mm, about but whatever uh, for going to my channel please like subscribe comment uh give me any suggestions if you have any or if you have any questions about anything let me know uh don't forget to follow me on instagram i'm like super active over my instagram my at is at uh, ugh dot my first name k-e-r-r-i-a